You cannot be bad at watching a movie. You cannot be bad at listening to an album. But you can be bad at playing a video game, and the video game will punish you and deny you access to the rest of the video game. <laughs> no other art form does this. You've never been reading a book, and three chapters in, the book has gone, what are the major themes of the book so far? <laughs> and you've gone, well, I, 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 I don't know what. <laughs> ah, for fuck's sakes! <laughs>
So, I mean, you know, for a guy that only had a few weeks to do it, I mean, yeah, it sucked, but, you know, he gave out the best he could. In the I mean, essentially, it's what a if a, what a college programmer would have pushed out at that time. Right. Yeah, and gotcha. if, that, if that's how you grade your scale is, to grade that on, then fine. It was okay. Uh, then there's Pac-Man, which is probably one of the biggest abortions in gaming history. <laughs> um, but everybody bought it. They Well, here's the thing. They bought it, but they made more co- copies of the game than they did consoles in the, on the market. Yeah. They thought people would buy the consoles to play the game. To play the game, and because you know who wouldn't want? I mean, I, I'm old enough to remember when um, there were lines galore at Fun and Games for the five Pac-Man games that they had. You could never get close to Pac-Man. Right. So you know, to bring it home as as a, as a ten-year-old kid, that is amazing. We're gonna play Pac-Man. It's, it's not fucking Pac-Man. Not even close. Which is sad, too, because in retrospect, we make fun of... Mike, you and I have made fun of this a lot with Jim. Oh, the main... The Casey honestly. Munchkin. But that Casey game was actually Munch- a better game. In hindsight, Casey Munchkin is a really good game. It was. But, you know, the the issue with, with the Atari Pac-Man was, it was, first of all, seizure-inducing... Mm. <laughs> oh my god, yes. Why is he blinking? What what color are the ghosts supposed to be? <laughs> I don't know what's up and what's down anymore. Oh, yeah, the team, oh, oh, the team we would flicker and it was like this purple pink kind of like flickering on and I'm like, oh god, I'm making a headache. And there's no, you know, like the sound. You know, when you when you when you play that's all you heard. It, it was. It just sounded like a bouncing train. They couldn't even put the siren in. But with, I mean, with, with Pac-Man, it was just such an abysmal failure, especially because, as you can tell from that computer version that you, we all looked at beforehand, mm-hmm. it's not hard to do. No, no. it's not no, a hard game to render. It's a circle. With it's a, a mouth. circle. Yes. But, you know, another thing that really killed... Uh, now, this is the thing. Everyone blames E.T. and, you know, to a lesser extent, Pac-Man. The glut of third-party games that Atari put out. Well, there was no, like, there was no, like, control over it. You had, like, at least nowadays, you have, you know, exclusive here, exclusive yeah. here. Everybody did everything. You had extensions that could play well, the games on this system. It was like Anarchy. The, the, big, yeah. well, the big problem with consoles, and that's it's still t- true today as it was back in the early 80s, is... Hardware manufacturers lose money on their consoles. Yes. They don't make any money on it. Yeah, All the yeah. money comes from the licensing to third parties. And like you said, Atari did not learn that lesson. And that's part and that's of what what that was them. one of the kids who killed them. But yep. as far as like you know, we know, I mean, E.T. is the only game that's actually been buried out in the middle of the... Uh, it was was the middle last of year they did? They, they it was, finally it, 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 was like it was a year ago. It was two years ago. It was an urban myth for the longest time. People were saying, oh yeah, Atari buried oh, millions of E.T. cartridges out in the middle of the New Mexico desert. Nobody yep. believed them. So they, they out, did. Yep. Turns out they did. Yes, apparently, some of them worked. Like, they weren't crushed. I mean, they were put into like a like a, like some kind of a I don't like, think cement like box... And some of the boxes were in there, and they were kind of like, they were flattened, but not like folded up, but they were actually in good shape. I don't think blowing into the cartridge is going to clear those out. <laughs> no. <laughs> so shall we move on to some other games? Yes, go for sure. It. Now, you know, let's go, uh, let's move on to the NES. Um, and uh, Steve, at Ape Cod at Twitter, writes, Battletoads was clearly developed by sadists who also hated their job and all children everywhere. <laughs> um, and also Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for NES. Oh, yeah. Uh, see above. Yeah. Once you lose Donatello, you're done. Oh my God! That yeah, Don- yeah Donatello. You need a Donatello. You need a Donatello for everything. Game codes in the game, you can actually play it. That's the only thing I can tell you because yeah. the game is it's it's hard. It's just ridiculously Battle hard. The oh, games well, were really too. hard though. They weren't giant flaming shit shows. Like they're both playable games. Yeah, they're that's hard, true. but but they're but playable. But they're the, not but train wrecks. But the, there's a point where a game is hard and it's not enjoyable. It, if, like Mega Man, it's a hard game, but it's enjoyable. Right. I could keep going back and back and playing it again because out of frustration that I want to finish it, but I enjoy it. Battletoads, it's one of those, I'm going to throw this thing out yeah. there and, and, well, along with my TV, and I'm going to use it as a mason, I'm going to hit somebody with it. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I don't know, guess, man. The Demon Souls the, uh, the franchise Turbo was successful. Right? Yes. But do you know there was, I guess, there's a spot if you hit it just right, one of the walls. Is I have not hit anything right in a long time. <laughs> I saw a guy do this. Apparently, there's like oh. a spot. Yeah, like he was doing trips, and, like tips on how to get by the game. And actually, if you thought that part was hard, there's actually worse parts of the game than that. Really? If you thought that was no. I saw the guy actually go through it, and 
there was a scene where he gets penalty. If you hit like one of the walls just right, it's like a warp zone. It takes you out of that to the next board. Okay. But then he goes. He was saying you got to do this thing and you got to chase this thing and do this. I was watching, going, "Holy shit, this game's even worse after that." Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I played so, ba- about, it was just ridiculously hard. I played Battletoads on the SNES, and I, I was really damn close to throwing that. Control it's not, right through the TV. Like I said, there are games that are challenging that are fun to play. This is not one of them. Yep. Then there was that pause music. Yeah. That stuff was that was actually pretty awesome. <laughs> Steve also mentioned that for the NES, he paid full price for X Men on oh, launch day. Oh, good God, he did. I don't pay full price at launch anymore. Good God, what that game was such a fucking disappointment. You had oh, two that characters, was so a punching bad. character, good God, and a shooting wonder, character. Yep. No wonder he's such a cynical bastard. That was one of those games also. That was an adoptive video classic, Mike. It was a cult, oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's how Mike and I met when I was working at the video I store. I think I rented X-Men when I was with you. No? No. Man, it's just... I did rent the God Awful Superman game. Oh. For N64? With a big head. For N64? No, no, the regular Nintendo game. The regular Nintendo oh. one. Where it was like a little bit, it was a big head and a small body. <laughs> and if you got much damage, you turn back to Clark Kent. Figure that one out. Much like the movies of Superman, it's hard to make a compelling Superman video game now, isn't it? You have to find the uh, the phone booth in order to turn back into Superman again. Yeah. <laughs> or you get enough energy. <laughs> oh, I'm weak? I better put the suit back on. Hold on. Oh, damn it. Now i got to settle my existential crisis to whether or not they help that busload of kids. I guess the original Japanese version had the original, um, what's it called, um... The original like theme song, the like, Williams uh, music, the Williams music. I guess probably the American mm-hmm. they couldn't get the rights to it. I was gonna say, I, you know, yeah, I'm no surprised way. it's not just you know the Japanese version, which was like, which was weird. They could actually get the original music. Yeah. Um. Oh, Joe, you wanted to bring up a couple of uh of godly classics here. Oh my God, I was subjected to this over a friend's house once, and I just couldn't get out of the building fast enough. So, Bible Adventures is allegedly. A uh, board game. At the start of it, they ask you to input a certain uh, uh, code. It came with a booklet full of questions, but they didn't bother asking you the actual questions in the game. That was just way too much effort to code all the questions in. You put in the code at the start of the game, and they would just give you a page number, and then you would select A, B, C, or D for when the pop quiz came up. And depending on the code, as long as it lined up with the booklet, you would get the answer right. What is this, Bible Jeopardy? Yes. Sure. Among other things, yes. <laughs> the game has no music. You are assaulting... <laughs> you are assaulting, I swear to God, mobile foodstuffs with this, forks and spoons. This is... This. <laughs> and barrel bombs. Don't ask me where the fuck those came from. This is an Amish video game is what it is. Daddy says dice are wicked. <laughs> oh my God. And, and, and like, the... the, the, the they didn't bother rendering a ground. <laughs> it's just on, on a black field. Rock. So, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Rock and roll is the devil's voice. <laughs> wait, wait, I, I went to Sunday school. I remember that. That was uh, Jesus with uh, the bread and the fish, and then Jesus throwing those flaming barrels at the monkey, right? Yes. Yeah. You are a sinner if you lose a dominion. <laughs> he, turned, he turned the water into wine, and then... Hot. <laughs> Right. <laughs> no, no, sinners. So help me out. What was the name of the other one I mentioned? Um, there was Bible Buffet, I think the first one, and Bible Adventure. That's what it was. Bible Buffet was the one where you were assaulting foodstuffs with knives and spoons. Bible Adventures was allegedly an RPG <laughs> done by the same guy, so they still haven't figured out how to render fucking grass. <laughs> down. <laughs> down, you wicked strawberry shortcake. Down! But obviously, the pointiness of a Denny's diner's spoon is far too violent for the Bible. You are now armed with fruit. <laughs> different fruits travel in different pro- well, uh, 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 different angles. You know what? I, and you are supposed to cleanse the earth of I, wickedness with here. Have some grapes, motherfucker. You know, I, I mean, I hate to say it. I hate to say it as a. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, Sporks are a devil's tool. I mean, well, no, I mean, I, you know, I grew up. Like a trident, I grew you know? up. Ca- I grew up Catholic, but at least my my mom kind of doesn't live in the Stone Age. But I can imagine going to like, you know, no, this is if, some fundy shit. No, 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 exactly. <laughs> if 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 I had like Mormon or fundamental friends when I was a kid, this would be the like the games they'd play if we went to the house for a sleepover. The worst part is you're supposed to be assembling the armor of God over the course of this alleged RPG, right? <laughs> I'm like. Oh my god, Joe! You gotta play this new game I got! It's called Bible Adventures! And I'm out! <laughs> if you I to... heard a rumor that there's playboys in the woods! <laughs> I'm gonna go check it out! <laughs> if at any point you wander into, like, a yeah. casino, 
a bar or a pawn shop, <laughs> they strip everything from you and you go back to the start of the game. And then you become a homosexual, and then they... <laughs> it's just brutal. Oh, my God. There were a I'm bunch serious? of Bible games, but none of them were, like, licensed by but, Nintendo. They no, were, they like, weren't. licensed crap. But it was well, almost no, like those, know, um... But was it, what was the, the, the black cartridge maker? You, oh, uh... Yeah, you bought Namco. Okay. Yeah. Namco made those cartridges because they figured out a way to reverse... Uh, engineer engineer the uh, the chipset. Well, because, well, Nintendo was very, very strict about who they third licensed to. You're not talking yeah. about the Tengen guys. Is that Tengen, it? that was it. Tengen, Sorry. Tengen, Tengen. Tengen. Yeah. 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 No, because Namco was a license. But actually, um, uh, for my Apple IIc, we had one of those Bible games. Oh my god, that's right. Yeah. Oh, they, well, they turned one. I remember there was a one for SNES. They actually turned it into like. They took Wolfenstein and recreated it, and you're like, you're playing, no, you're, you're Noah. Playing, you're playing Noah, and you're, you're Noah, out the and you had to knock out the animals to get them. With a tranquilizer dart. You gotta look it up. It's, you know. Oh my god. Well, I mean, well the worst part is, so I've been with going a blow dart. You gotta tranquilize the animals with a blow dart. So I've been going off about Bible Adventures. That got a Game Boy port and an SNES port oh as well. Oh my god, that was good and holy. You, you know these games, though? They remind me of those games that you get at, like, chain restaurants. Yep. Yes. And it, it's almost like, you know, it's a 700 Club thing. It's like, are you afraid that your child is either homosexual or dating a Negro? Then <laughs> we're going to give you this game when you give us $700. You can order your copy of Bridges and Gaps from Latter-day Saints. God. Uh, uh, yes, right. we are making fun of you. What? <laughs> Seriously, what? Oh, is that Jesus. it? Oh, Jesus. Oh, wait, wait, dude. oh, yep, the Noah game. Yep, yep, that, yep. That That's looks, the Noah game. That these games like can turn you into an atheist because there's no loving God that would allow these things to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's all right, but it's no Chex Quest. Uh, oh, my God. Just picture oh. shooting the ass right in the ass. <laughs> uh, uh, yep, but yep. Boom. Okay, side of mine. All right, anyway. Joe, you got a couple others? Um, Mickey Mouse Capades. The cartridge-long hostage situation. <laughs> We, we all know how much I love Escort Quest. You love Escort Quest. Everyone so, loves yeah. Escort oh, wait, Quest. Was this the one where basically Especially you were Mickey and Minnie at all times? That's correct. And if Minnie got stuck, you were screwed? Uh-huh. You can't leave the screen without that her. Game. That was and awful. If, and she jumps behind you at all times. Yep. Like, you jump, and then she jumps. But if she misses the jump and winds up in the pit, you die. That's the end of that. Yep. Um, <laughs> Just like a woman. You're it, the... Well, that's the thing. You're the hostage. Yeah, yeah. You're the hostage. <laughs> She's holding you hostage the entire game. <laughs> and, and, and the worst and most evil part about this game is one of the levels is uh, in the woods, and you're, you're you're traipsing through the woods, and there are different um, seasons in the woods, and there are trees that have doorways that you're supposed to go into to advance the next area. The bitch of it is, the only doorways that won't send you back to the very beginning are invisible. So, so I'm looking, I'm looking. You have to know where they are, and the worst one's the one in winter because you have to loop through the entire area, and then the correct doorway will spawn after you have crossed the start line again. But you can't, so, still so, can't see so, it. So you not, still have to know where it is and shoot it. So I'm looking at I'm looking at the screenshots of it. It looks like a bastardized version of or like Super Mario. Pitfall and ColecoVision Smurf Adventures like ah! Bastard Child. Smurf Adventures is probably the closest. Like, Super Mario would make sense if you could jump on things. Right. Fucking no. You start with no weapon. They're nice enough to give Mickey a single star that you can shoot. Have one on the screen at a time. Plink. 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 Oh my god. Boy, you know what Mickey I, I, say right well, now? You better hope for Mickey that Minnie gives it up at the end <laughs> of all these. Because... Eventually, you can find a second one and Minnie can attack. And that kind of makes the game a little more helpful until you get to the last level, where it's like the, you're in a castle, you're supposed to be saving Alice, there are windows that you uh, shoot to get health back, until one of them to opens up, gives you an owl, the owl abducts Minnie, you're all the way back to the beginning. She, she goes back to the first room in the fucking castle. Good luck, you forgot to say may I. Oh, God. <laughs> that game hates you. Yes. And the other one from Disney? Oh my god. Can I just go back to the Mickey Mouse? I can just see yeah. Mickey now going, This game sucks! Ha ha! Ha! Damn it, Mickey! Ha ha ha! Fuck you, Mickey! You get screwed up, bitch! <laughs> Fucking adventures in, uh... uh, uh, uh Magic uh, Kingdom. Magic Kingdom. So it's a series of mini-games where you play some asshole in a, a cowboy hat. A some tourist. Dude. You're a tourist is what it is. No, you're just some dude. You're a cast member. You're a cast member. Did Capcom put out the Mickey Mouse ones? I can't remember. 
I think they did. I know, yeah. I know they released. Oh, I, would, um, I would have expected so much more. No, because one thing is, how are you going to see? You have like Ducktales and Chip and Dale were actually really good games. Yes. They were. So hey, Castle just, Evolution was pretty good. Castle Evolution. But that's that, much later. Yeah. That was Genesis, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, so uh, it's a series of mini games, and you're supposed to be wandering around the park, gathering these keys that you get when you complete these meaningless right. tasks. But like, you have limited ammunition in a Ghosts and Goblins clone. <laughs> and there are pixel perfect jumps you have to be pulling off the entire time. And my own personal favorite part, they rendered the entire area as a large square, but only the area south of the castle has anything in it. You can just wander off into a grassy eternity if you go <laughs> off in the wrong direction. I just you know, I actually was like I started watching some of the screenshots that I'm like, um Okay, what I checked out Wikipedia to find out anything about it. The entire map is actually based on Disneyland, not the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, we watched, we watched the, uh, the, uh, the guy speed run it in, what was it, less than ten minutes? Yep. Oh, yep. Boy. That was God. vicious. Yeah. Wow. It's a short game. It is a short game, but it's like, just... Because Scarlett was watching it with me, she's like, is that supposed to be the Haunted Mansion? I'm like, yes, for the one thing that looks like it came out of the ride, the, the dancing couple. Yep. And that's it. That is fucking it. The whole thing is so bad. <laughs> Adventures at Epcot Center. Wait, why do I have to wait more than 15 minutes in line for Spaceship Earth? <laughs> Isn't this thing constantly in motion? <laughs> Unless there's a person in a, in a motorized scooter. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yep. Then they have to All slow right, the stop whole everything, everything yep. down. That's when I love when they get Judy Dench to say, Sorry, the, the attraction has stopped for a moment. Please stand by. Does Walter yeah. Cronkite still narrate that? No, it's Judy Dench. Well, now. well you do see Walter Cronkite. Dame, that's you know, how far yeah, back it's been since I've been Judy there. Dench, you heathen. Dame Judy Dench. Yes, it was funny because we were sitting there. Um, we, we, you know, we, we were taking the ride. Autumn's like, "Who is this?" And I'm like, "Shame on you, woman." Do you know who? Shame was, on you. Do you know who narrated it before Judy Dench? Jeremy Irons. Yes, it was. That's yep. right. So that will turn that ride cruel. <laughs> Oh boy. All right, so the next up on our list is actually not from the NES, but from the uh, N64. Oh. Majora's Mask, which Steve writes is saying, um, and he uh, it looked no further than Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. It's like a Madden sequel without the roster updates. <laughs> now, that's that's... That's not right, because that game had a good story. It was very playable. It, do it does have its defenders. It definitely has some defenders. I can understand it's, why people didn't like it, but it wasn't a bad game either. It was. It went. It really. It felt. You know what it felt like. It, obviously, it came out prior to the advent of DLC. Yeah. It feels like downloadable content. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. almost yeah. like there's like this extra side. That. It's like that extra like expansion pack. I didn't want to spend fifty dollars for this game type of uh, content. It felt yeah. like an expansion pack. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's exactly. Speaking of which, it. I did just get a switch. You did. I did. Nice. Get a switch. Nice. And I'm in the middle of Breath of the Wild. Oh, that, that is such a fun game. That's a hard game. Yeah. I, be, I believe Santa Claus is bringing that for my children. Game. Huh? Is it? Is it? It's like Legend of Zelda in it's Skyrim. Hell. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's huge. Um, and then another one, I believe, uh, Mike. This was your, this is your doing on the list. Which one? Hold Superman sixty four. Oh, oh that is such so an awful game. That game. Again. I'm sorry. That game is worse than E. T. It is. I I I I'd be hard to argue with you. Like the rings. Only like because the rings. Figure, like technology the rings. Today. And the, the shit that, you but, know, you had to go through. And you got to be a beloved but character. Even, but even not the technology of today, the S64 was a pretty powerful little console. It was. To give that, sh just, that shit. Yeah. The, the <laughs> controls were awful. Oh, the God. rings, trying to get through the rings was awful, because it was so tight, you could, if you made like, I, I believe states, the term that Joe used was pixel perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, once you got through the rings, you had, like, five seconds to do some weird thing where you had to, like, pick up a car and bring it over here, and if you didn't do it right, you start over at the rings again, and you had to go through the rings, try this whole thing, you got through that. Then you got to do the rings again, and then you got to do some other thing. If you screw that up, you something. go back to the beginning. And I guess at one point, there were points where you could actually fight in the game, but it was like some weird, like, down-chopping motion. <laughs> this is Superman, he's like, I'm going to hit you now, you know, and it's... Judo chop. The voices were all, it was like half the voice actors weren't even in it. Like Tim Daly, I don't think he did the voice. It was yeah. like the guy, you know, um, Clancy Brown was even Lex Luthor. It was like, so, you know, 
the music was like can't just awful but just music they just kind of just went let's just kind of just play this no so that game was it was, just, it was bad guys look what fell out of my ass today <laughs> I rented it at Blockbuster Video and I returned it the next day it was like and the guy's like really I said, yeah this game's awful yeah. <laughs> take it off the shelf he's like you're not the first person to tell us this <laughs> all right so the next thing uh, was one of my contributions. Every single 2000s WWE game that wasn't uh, made by THQ or for the PlayStation, for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Was Have this... you ever played the GameCube or Xbox WWE games? No. From that era? No. Like the Rock Austin era. Are you talking about like the attitude, like WWF attitude in those games? Well, there was, talking, I mean, it, after, like the PlayStation 1 games? Well, the PlayStation 1 stuff from Acclaim was terrible. Because the second one was worse. I remember, because remember the voiceovers, right? Since you guys that video of like yep. all the voices doing it. Yeah. And, and it's funny, it's so, it's like, it gets monotonous, but it's actually kind of funny too when you hear some of the bad act voice acting. I mean, there, there, were, there were bad THQ PlayStation games, Jeff. Uh, SmackDown 3 was terrible. SmackDown 1 and 2 were good, though. The last ride! The last ride! <laughs> oh, no, the commentary ride. was, was yeah. shit. <laughs> this is an exciting intercontinental... Championship. ...match. <laughs> the people's elbow! The people's elbow! The people's elbow! It was Taz doing that. <laughs> but the games for the GameCube, I think one of them was Day of Reckoning. I never played any of them. Oh, bad. I, I got it, like, on clearance mm. for the GameCube, and I was, I was playing, like, just... The, the mechanics suck. The animation is terrible. It's just like... The SmackDown games, to a lesser extent, the Raw vs. SmackDown games, you know, really were better, more immersive. And I think it's like when you had like the N64-like games, like, you know, the NWO vs. WCW Revenge. Oh, God. And, and then, of course, when that folded and they brought the... Those games were fun. Yeah, the characters were idiots, but it was like... Remember the Block of Punch? Remember yep. the Block of Punch? Puff your chest out. <laughs> yep. I'll take that punch. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, the oh. no-sell technique. Yep. Because <laughs> he's a brick. How's, How's he? he? <laughs> you look like the poor man's Marcus Bagwell. They wouldn't let That's you not do, saying much. They wouldn't let you do creator wrestlers, so they had a whole bunch of, like, dish rags that you could choose from, and one of the guys' names was Brokowski. And that was Jekyll, and you know what his, what his, like, his taunt move was? What's the that? The dog peeing. Oh, okay. Basically like what Adele Buckham Jr. did this weekend. Oh, um, past weekend. God. Oh, God. All right, next up, um, oh, now who entered this one? The greatest failed cash grab of all time. Oh, this one's me. All right, oh, Joe, go ahead. Enter the Matrix was awful. Fuck that game. Is that the MMO? <laughs> no. no that's oh. the, this Matrix was online. the partner to the Animatrix. Oh, that I was, remember no, that. No, was yeah. it, no, didn't this take place, like, supposed to be between the Matrix and the It was, like, people? side events. Yes. Yeah. Like, like it, an Animatrix. It yeah. was a side event that was supposed to, like, jump... But it, it was supposed, in, it was supposed to, to be relevant, in. but it really just fucking wasn't. Yeah. Couldn't you play, like, awful. one of the characters was Jada Pickett-Smith? You could yeah. play as her yes. character. Yeah. And, her and, part, and, and, her and her partner, partner was that kind of just... Token Asian guy, whoever that guy was. Token Asian guy. He was the guy that had, like, one line, you know, that was it. So the, the, the game forged to pure clipping errors. It was brutal. Oh, I've God. never seen such poor editing like in the code ever. Uh, that a was a, I, I saw I saw a demo of it at GameStop, and I just like nope. And this is this was around the time that the the Matrix marketing machine was really like, just going in, you know, just, just all, going all in, in no lube. It was just. I think that was when every deep. game had bullet time, you know? All of a sudden, you want to play oh. as Mega Man? Bullet time, you know? It's Max <laughs> Payne. Super Mario, oh, bullet Max time. Pain. Oh, oh God. squeaky face. God, these are... But the Matrix game just made no sense, because, yeah, you're right. They essentially took a character nobody gave a shit about in the first place. It's not like, I get to play as Neo. Right. <laughs> or even Trinity. Or Trinity, exactly. I get to play as... Or even Larry Fishburne, for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, right? Or Joey Pants. I mean, come on. You know, he's in the, you know, they could have brought him back or something like that. Found some way to bring him back to life. G give me a game where I play as Agent Smith. Would have been fine. But yep. no. Or even, or even Agent Number 5. I mean... <laughs> sure. But, like, you were... The, 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 cl the clipping errors were what made it unplayable. Oh, it was, like, you, it was miss, you miss a wall, and all of a sudden you're just catapulted into black nothingness forever. <laughs> yeah. Just restart the game because it's shot. <laughs> hey, it's just one of those things that the game doesn't recognize that you made a mistake. And won't let you start over again. In the answer to even the game even just looked like you didn't get to play it, and oh, it, it just looked look. like like the controls were like stiff. Right. Just, I could just you could just feel it without even playing the game. Mm. I played. It was a dark. Was it dark empire? It was like one of those PC 
Star oh, Wars Dark game. Forces. Dark Forces. Dark Forces. And I, I, I play this PC game, and I put myself on God mode because I suck at video games, right. so I was going to get through. Well, that was a fun one. But I, I fell off of a chasm, like, just trying to do, like, a mission. And you just, you, you fall, you hit the ground, and you can't do anything. And I'm thinking to myself, normally if I wasn't playing as God mode, I'd be dead. Why did they bother to animate the bottom of this thing? <laughs> oh, God. The bottom of the Why ravine. Not? Realism, Andy. It's all about realism. Just to get assholes like me who decided to cheat their way through it. Yep. All right, and I got one more, and I'm pretty sure we all have our own horror stories about this, but um, disappointing home console ports that could never, ever oh, live yes. up Ooh. to the uh, to the arcade version. Now, obviously, we already talked about Pac-Man. I- I've spoken at length about how awful the Atari 2600 and television Donkey Kongs were. Yeah. The Atari 2600 Donkey Kong, where he actually where where the ape is on the right hand side of the yeah. screen. <laughs> um, so everything you learned in the, in the arcade, you got to reverse it now. Yep, and then some because the game still didn't play. You know, yeah. follow the rules. Because I'm thinking mainly like Afterburner. Oh, well, for me it was that was one of the Tengen. It was one of the Tengen uh, Tengen illegal games, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. But it's just like you know, you're sitting in the cockpit. Here's your, here's your here's your controller. Have fun, Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> to to using the D pad. Oh, oh. I got another one like that. Marble Madness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, good God, yes. Yeah. The difference in control between the, the, the spin the track spin, ball yeah. versus having to use the D-pad was just... But the NES was port awful. was a decent port considering... It, it looked had, good. If you had a track ball, it was it okay. It looked good, but it... Yeah, right. If you had a track ball, it was okay. It was a decent port considering... Crystal what, Castles? That's was, another there game. There you go. Yeah, there's a yeah. game that, used, that did a really nice job with the... Uh, the trackball, but you know, God forbid, you got to use the D pad on it. I actually have Crystal Castles on our um, Atari Twenty Six Hundred emulator. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's bad. The controls just <laughs> suck horribly. <laughs> um, Hubert. Oh yeah. You got to hold the controller at an angle. I you figured that out. Yeah, yeah. Forty five degree angle. Forty five degree angle. A uh, paper boy. Mike. Mike. Oh, no, oh, that was yeah. so oh, bad. Oh yeah. Um, the uh, Spy Hunter. What, for the NES? Huh? The NES? The NES. That was all right. Well, I, I like the controls of the game, but right. I, I like having the steering wheel. I feel Still like pl- I feel bad, Catherine. I feel like... No, it's okay. <laughs> no, I knew that Joe would have a lot to contribute, so... It still tried to rock and, that and Peter Gunn theme. It did. Good. The next show, I'll be good. <laughs> okay, excellent. You got a couple more. You got like yeah. Xen- I, remember oh. Z- I had Xenophobe. I was like, I loved that game in the arcade. Yeah, yep. three different screens. Oh my god, I wasted fucking oh. birthday money. And I remember finally it came out in NES. I'm like, I want to get this game. I want to get this game. I bought it. First off, it's two screens, and the character you only had like what two characters to pick from. Two characters. Yeah. Doctor Quack and some other guy with the weird head. Doctor Quack and Stein. Yeah. Yeah, and the weird guy with the vi- with the big head and the visor. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> and the like, game never ended. Nothing ever happened. And you couldn't... The controls are tough on that game. You can't crouch. Well, that you goes can't shoot at an angle. Um, and, yeah, you, the three the three controller thing, that, that's one thing. Yeah. But I actually put that on my NES hack, my NES Classic hack. Yeah. Just it couldn't have been that bad, right? No, that no, game fucking sucks. sucks. But then we have Rampage on there, too. I, put yep. that, I added Rampage, that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember getting Rampage, because I remember Rampage in the arcade. You had three different characters. You had George, Lizzie, and Ralph. Yep. 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 And... It was just fun. You go, you destroy buildings. And you, you know, you eat this, do this, whatever. And then you had the port. No Ralph, which yeah. I, I love Ralph. Oh yeah, Ralph. Oh, you, awesome. you, they diss Ralph. And then, of course, during the game, there was a scene where if you got through enough boards, all of a sudden your character would drop onto the United States of America, go dun 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 dun. He'd punch one piece, and also would turn either black or gold or color. That means you conquered that state. Right. Oh, there must be a finish. So I remember spending hours, and every time you'd finish another section, finish another section, finish another section. I finally finished it all. It starts over. <laughs> what a big F you. <laughs> I remember I was up late at night doing it, and I'm like, part of me died that day. That's like Ralphie, you know, getting the be sure to drink your Ovaltine. I had a, I had a, I had a game. <laughs> and in an alternate universe, some girl was going to show you her boobs that night. You got it. <laughs> we, we, we did have an Atari game that we got to play when some, when uh, my brother's friend got a Nintendo, so we got to play it on our ColecoVision with the port on it. And, <laughs> and, uh, and it was it was you were a you were a kangaroo making your way from level to level, room to room, punching things because you're a kangaroo. <laughs> and you start at level A, and then you go to level B, 
and we made our way through. We got to level Z. We're like, we win. No, you go to level AA. It's like a fucking Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> and we're like, you know what? We're done. We got through level Z. We quit. We, we win. <laughs> we never played it again. Or like Ghost of Goblins. Beat the whole game. Oh, this is an illusion. You gotta do it again. Oh, you gotta do it yeah. again. And now yeah. it's harder. Oh. This time we're gonna punch you in the dick before you begin. <laughs> You ever play that game? They punch you with the deck the whole time, dude. Yeah. I just love that there's nothing, you know, because I, I, I'm fairly certain that there's nothing better on, you know, against your naked skin than steel. <laughs> <laughs> no undergarments. There's no undergarments. It's just boxer shorts. The you know? chafing. My God, the, the chafing. chafing. <laughs> Arthur is in the new Marvel Capcom game. Oh, I but I have sensitive that. nipples. And he's like, you know, a little strutting. He's throwing his little... <laughs> when you beat him, his armor's just flying off. <laughs> all right, guys, shall we move on to peripherals? Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Here's where all the real money was wasted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never wasted my money on any of these things. No, I'm sure gone. you didn't, Joe. You didn't waste your money. Your well, parents, you... on the other hand. <laughs> exactly. I didn't say I'd waste my money. All right, mine. we'll start with the granddaddy of, of, of lost hopes and dreams, the Nintendo Power Glove. <laughs> what was it? it Hang was on, what? We need a sound. We need a sound drop here from the Wiz. Oh, it's so be. bad. Thank it's you. so bad. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. <laughs> that, that's that's the only claim to fame this thing has. The only claim. To oh fame. They had a game for it where you like threw balls at a power, three like dimensional power glove. Ball. So it's yeah. Like power yeah. Glove, like you power could play without the without super glove. The glove. Ball. The super yeah. glove ball. That you get the it. Infinity Gauntlet. It's and all it's about the Power <laughs> Glove. And of course, to hook the thing up. You had to like plug it into a port, and they had like three sensors. Yep. You know, and you, of course, you know, back in the fat TV screens, you had one sensor here, one sensor here, one sensor down here, and of course, the thing never stayed up. You had to like tape it down. Yeah, that, that was the issue because TVs at that point were rounded. You know, they, nothing sat flat. No one no. had, no one had like their TV consoles. They didn't, they didn't have a place to put all their oh, stuff. Oh yeah, this one was a good ten years before any flat screen came out, or even like the just a flat monitor. Yeah. You know? Um, and the power source. I'm sure it had a power source that was wretchedly huge. <laughs> D-batteries. Okay. No, it's right. It was D-batteries. It was right. Oh, was that what it? The power glove with D-batteries? It didn't have a I, No, it, it, no, it didn't have a D-battery. It was too small to have it. Okay, yeah. So what do you use? Probably like 16 AA batteries or something. Or a 9-volt. At least 6-volt. It didn't, six on. It didn't, it didn't have a huge uh, transformer that you needed to Well, that's the thing. I haven't... That gets super hot. I don't have that many experiences with the power glove. They had to have figured out some way of powering up those sensors with a gigantic power cell that, you know, again... It is about the width of three slots on your uh, on your power strip. Oh yeah. my god! Did you find it, Mike? Absolutely. All right. Um, yeah. The the controls. I like. You know what game they showed using the the power glove with was Top Gun. Oh god! Oh I'm Jesus! Hey, I'm gonna land now. Fuck off! Just fuck off right now. <laughs> you can't land with the controller. Tell me that doesn't scream eighties. Oh my god! <laughs> That dude is get, all mullet. That is all mullet. He's got the Oakley thermonuclears <laughs> and, ro- and a power glove. Robot Jocks prequel looking real bad. Robot <laughs> Jocks. Oh jeez. <laughs> that's a movie. And after this, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to uh, the Orpheum and go see Enough's Enough. <laughs> Introductory price for the power glove: seventy five dollars. Yeah. In nineteen eighties money. That is yeah. That is nineteen eighty nine money. Um, yeah, 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 yeah it, so, actually, so. It, it's got it's got the equivalent. It's got to be a, equivalent to in 2016 dollars and ninety one cents. Fuck, Fuck that! Dude. I have a hard enough time spending sixty dollars on a game now. <laughs> F you, Nintendo. The only thing I could think of that was comparable that was an Xbox game. I forget the name, but it was a mech game that came with an entire like yes. pit board. I don't remember the name of the game. It was a either. couple bills for, for for the game, but it came with an entire cockpit and if you were losing the fight and you wanted to keep playing the game, you, you had to actually use the eject button. Like it was Oh my god. Yeah, that is what some rich loner douchebag buys for himself, you know? Right? Yep. Anything on the power source? Not yet. So I don't think it I don't think it needed it. I don't think it you know, if to anything be honest, it was just I don't sensors. think it did. All right, let's not waste any more time yeah, on the power sources. It doesn't say anything, sources. so it would have said whatever. Right. But there was one in here later that did need a lot of batteries. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, that one. oh, apparently... Yeah? Oh, wait. Apparently, uh, well, no, not, not the power source, but it, it does have another claim to fame. What's that? <laughs> in uh, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, I guess Freddy Krueger oh, yes. kills someone with the power glove. Yep. 
Now you're playing with power, bitch. <laughs> yeah, he was controlling one kid. It was like a video game thing. He was like, he was freaking the controlling kid. He had like the controller and it had like spikes and shit on it. Oh, yeah. Jesus. That is that is some Hellraiser bullshit. Well, apparently it was featured in the movie Beethoven as well. Really? Yeah. Not just the wizard? Yeah. <laughs> Other than Super Mario 3, everything about the wizard was just bad marketing 101. Oh, <laughs> including the movie. Absolutely awful. <laughs> I want to go to California. Oh, God. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> Shall we talk about the original Nintendo fail? <laughs> Rob? Oh, God. <laughs> I swear to God, the only reason I... My... my um, my Actually, was it my mother or my dad? No, it was my dad that bought me the Nintendo. Um, the only reason he would have deigned to buy me that Nintendo was because all the other peripherals were removed from the box. <laughs> including oh. Rob. Oh. And I was so mad. I wanted Rob until I played a Rob game and realized I'm so happy I don't have this waste I mean, of plastic. You played <laughs> one of the only two games it ever came out with? God, that's how all it you, was. How do you make a flagship character and only have two games ready to go? Well, he, because he, I think they were going to probably make more, but probably the thing was so horrible. Right. They just said... Yeah, no more. <laughs> we don't want to pull an ET. <laughs> the funny thing is, Rob has made a comeback recently. Well, in Smash Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's just one of those things that it looked really, really cool. You know you know what they should do? It, they, they have, like, Master Hand and Wacky Hand. They should do a Power Glove one. Ooh. Ooh. There is actually a Rob You, amiibo. sir, are a genius. Huh? There's a Rob what? Amiibo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I've seen that one. And you figure, and think you figure too is Nintendo was trying I, innovative things. I will, I will get, I will give the Japanese and, the, and Nintendo credit for not letting failure stand in the way of making a buck. Yeah, <laughs> you, you give Nintendo points for at least trying to be original with something and trying yeah. something different. And you figure that some of this stuff did lead to other technology down the road. This failed, but they learned from it and made some better things to go with it later. Right, because so the like, idea. I mean, like I said, the idea was good. Just again, when the final because product it, came out. Didn't really use Because if it wasn't for the power pad, we'd never have Dance Dance Revolution. What is it? Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Oh, was God, it? the power pad. Oh, what, was it the Rob? world's worst twister uh, set. <laughs> was it, wasn't Rob in the uh, the Muppet movie? Yes. Like the ask, 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 ask the expert. The 2000 was Rob? Rob is the robot from uh, oh, the Nintendo and Nintendo robot. System. Yeah, 80s yeah. robot. Okay. I don't know that was... No, that wasn't Rob. That was the Omnibot 2000. Yeah. Omnibot. It looks like... The head looks like Rob. Yeah. Right. But it, if it was an Omnibot, was that the one that used the 8-track? Mike, it's your art typical 80s robot. You got right. it. <laughs> mo- mo- 80s movie robot. It's We're not going to worry about the details. I will have there. to use my modem. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is your... It is it's your, got that yellowing on it. <laughs> it is your non copyrightable robot. Yeah. God. So, yeah. No, Rob was... But, you know, the thing is, is that Mike's right. Nintendo was trying to innovate, especially after the stain of the Atari 2600. Yeah. To actually have a console that wasn't really a console. It was supposed to be fun and entertainment and system, figure, well, if you will. The other you, you, they had was the Zapper, which actually did very well. Yeah. Well, you got to remember that in, in Japan, it's called the Nintendo Family Computer. The yeah. Fam- the, the Famicom. Famicom. The Famicom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so they that was their, you know, J- Jap- Japan's concern was... This is going to be the all-around family box. It's not right. going to be a game system. Right. Of it's, course. it's something for everybody, basically. Of, of course, course, those Americans, course, we don't... <laughs> because the Famicom had that one flaw. The cords were, like, embedded into the system. Yeah. You right. Unplug them. Of course, of course, then they tried to do the zapper for the SNES, and they came up <coughs> with the Super Scope, oh. which I had. You are looking at the next breakthrough for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Introducing Super Scope 6. Remote powered and laser accurate. Precise to a single television pixel. It comes with six great games and it's yours for under $70. All of which gets you into the game like never before. Super Scope 6 only for Super Nintendo. System and Scope sold separately. Now you're playing with power. Super power. You had a Super Scope? Oh yeah. And all of two games I'm for I'm sorry it. for your right. parents. <laughs> What was How the much other of an one? idiot did you feel ah, like standing in the middle of the room? One. One. But what was the other? I think it was the one that Kate Blue came packaged with. No. Yeah, it was just a generic shoot this and. Did it actually like work? Six mini super games. Missile Did it actually work? Did it actually kind of actually. Yeah, yeah, well, kind of. Have you seen the Super Scope? The Super Scope essentially is the uh, the uh, extension of my manhood device. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Instead of a little gun, it's now a bazooka. 
Which funny thing is, it's got like the, the handle here, which had all the buttons up here. Yeah. 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 So you had to look through the scope and then hit the button, and they like had like three little buttons right up by your hand, and I think there was another button, like a trigger button as well. Jesus yeah. Christ! I don't think it had trigger. It just had everything was like. Joe, no, 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 no,
Um, when you put your game in, there's actually a Game Genie thing. Okay. You go to it, it gives you five like of the top codes that were used. Okay. You can put them in before you play the game, which is actually a pretty cool feature. I was just far too lazy. I just felt that the cartridge should just do it for me. The only, the only problem with the Game Genie was... I was a purist. I, I, I was of the opinion that if you were playing it with the Game Genie on, there was no point. Why bother even starting when it's going to be so easy? The only problem with the Game Genie so were, were the it. codes were impossible to memorize. Right. I mean, it was like 53YX92. And it wasn't short either. It was oh, like no. 10 or 12 right. digits. Yeah. And this is pre-internet, too. Yeah, so you, so, had to, you had to buy the book. The magazine. Co- Nintendo Power. Yeah. yeah. Or whatever gaming monthly they had. It had it would have had them because they were fucking pissed at whatever company put out the Game Genie. Was it Galoob? Oh, I think so. Oh, I think it was the Yeah, Galoob sounds right. They were fucking pissed that they reverse engineered that thing. <laughs> All right, so anyway, oh boy, we got to talk about this one because this was a more recent fail. The Xbox Connect. Oh, God. It was their, like, their motion sensor that before a massive firmware update uh, would not register darker skin tones. <laughs> no, that's not a problem. If he ain't white, it ain't all right. So, oh God. all right, Kerwin. <laughs> Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Dante Hicks is just like you. He loves grape soda. This was like it's just one of those things. I just, just always remember. This. I know I've told the story a thousand times in the show before, but when uh, my coworker Felipe was going to go buy one the day it came out. They get a dive out of the office, like, no! <laughs> Just thinking, you could have played Connect Star Wars. I could have. I chose not to. Or you could have been slow motion force. Uh. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know why. I just got like this thing about the Xbox. Like, I'm just, I'm going to stick with my PlayStation and be happy with it. The thing's gotten way too invasive, in my opinion. Anything that's always watching and listening for me to address it, I got problems with that. Wait, Hello, Joseph. Joseph. Is it that time? That special time? Is it couch time right now? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. The worst part is there's somebody in our condo who has a, 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 another Xbox 360, and they will fire it up in the middle of the day, apparently, through using the controller, and they haven't found a way to differentiate their frequency from my frequency, so I'm sitting, you know, in another part of the house when I hear my Xbox randomly fire up. <laughs> And then all of a sudden you're talking shake weight talks to you so you can do it and sports <laughs> off the food yeah. and gives you the cap fare. <laughs> so when, when was it that you walked past the door and went, hello, Joe, are you coming in now? <laughs> Shortly I before I disconnected that son of a bitch from the wall. I'm sorry, Joe, I can't allow that. <laughs> no! What is that you just sprayed at me? It is a toxin, Joe. <laughs> so you've got that one eye in the middle. Exactly. <laughs> you haven't gotten the red ring of death yet? We're not going to talk about how many of these things I've been through, okay? Jesus, that is, that that is, the is one what thing turned that... Jim. That's what turned oh, Jim. That's what turned, that turned my brother. My yeah. brother was hardcore Xbox until his fifth Xbox. I'm like, what? It took you five? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I only, I, When's he getting I, Destiny 2? To be fair, I've only played <laughs> for two of the He'll break, yeah, I will break him. Break he him. will get Destiny I, I 2. Only, I only got one. Uh, I only got the Red Ring of Death once. Really? Yeah. We parked, we parked the one that we bought... Joe that lives at our condo on a uh, PC cooling pad I had kicking around. Oh, that helps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, I, I bought one of the first generation ones. Like I went back when I was working in Circuit City. Yeah. Uh, and I guess all the other employees that bought one the first the, for like the first day, they all had a return. Me, mine worked yeah. great for like five years. Now, was this the... This was the Xbox One, wasn't this it? Was the, the original... The 360. Well, the Xbox and the 360 both had. Uh, had right. I, I never had any issues with my Xbox One. I just looked up. Well, the, the original yeah, Xbox the original One. Xbox. You know, the, the one that looks like a, ch- a really crappy regional championship belt. That's how you invented the thing. If you put it, like, in a little container, yeah, it's going to work. Right. Yeah. All right. And, uh, okay. The last thing in peripherals here. The really shitty Sega Genesis add-ons. Oh God, that was like life support. Let's start ones. with the um. Oh, the, the, the Sega CD. CD. No, no, no. The CD because well, that, that's, came yeah. well, yeah, that stunk of desperation for Sega. The CD, Sega CD. Remember, a guy in college had it, um, and we were trying to play it. We were trying to play like Sewer Shark. Oh my God! Yeah, well, he has Sewer Shark, and then of course the Great. <laughs> well, awesome. It, like like trap. Well, no, it <laughs> it it reeked of desperation for Sega because 
until they came out with the Dreamcast, they had nothing no. to compete against the PlayStation. Well, the Saturn. No, well, yeah, the Saturn. Saturn. It was the Saturn. Saturn. Yeah, that's, yeah. But even the Saturn was still a console. But the problem was, you had, you had the Sega CD, and I'll kind of lump them all together. You had the Sega CD that kind of came out, okay, look, now we got video, like video, full motion video, right. because that was like the dawn of the full motion video. And a lot of those were hit and miss because you had this little itty bitty screen, it was very pixelated. As opposed to like CD ROM games, which were much better right. quality. Well, looked so better, like, yeah. well, we need something a little bit better to kind of enhance that. Let's get this mushroom thing we're going to put on top of it that will connect with the Sega CD. The 32X. Also, it needed its own power cord. Yep. It needed its own um, its own power its supply. Own, it needed a video cord too. You had to connect. It was like at that point. I remember <laughs> it was like it was, it was like on life support. It had so many cords coming out of it. Well, that thing's drawing. That thing's drawing a lot. You are drawing a lot of juice out of yeah. that strip. <laughs> so and that's and here's the thing. They say because of all that crap, that's what started to kill Sega because they tried to do so many things to save that system. Then the Saturn came out, which did okay, but not well enough. Dreamcast actually did well, but the damage was so done from the other two systems, right. it killed it. The thing was is that the, the Genesis had one really good year. Yeah. I mean, it year. was year it was a out. very good year. That's, that's Monday Night first year. Yeah. Right. The, the issue was that, yeah, they... When Nintendo with the because they were they hadn't released the uh, the um, the sixty four yet, so they were like trying to figure out a way to enhance you know get a little more life out of the SNES. This was really the dawn of the console wars. Well, yeah, but what they had done was they figured out a way to use polygons as opposed to just standard you know sprites and stuff like that. The other making thing Donkey they did. Kong Country. Well, the other thing they did was that that FX chip foolishness that yeah. was like a processor inside the cartridge. Yeah. Mm. Well. The- but Sega had blast processing, which you could basically well, Sonic could move well, so the pro- fast. The thing is with Sega, is Sega is was prim- Sega is primarily a software company, and not a hardware company. Right. So they they had a very steep learning curve. I I still laugh at the 32x though because it really just counted that um, your customers know a little bit about math and nothing about basic computer processing. <laughs> yeah. Because it's well, it's a 16 gig. You stack it on top of your 16 gig. Yeah, you have to have 32, uh, you know. Well, the other thing, too, is I think the Sega CD also kind of came because Nintendo was originally going to make that CD, uh, the CD yeah, well, the original, well, the original PlayStation later. was going to yeah. right. well, be a, Sony a Nintendo and, Sony peripheral. Sony and Nintendo were going to have some kind of partnership with a peripheral, and then that fell through, and then Philips was going to do something like that, and there's a whole story about that later. Yeah, we got so on that. So there's a whole thing we'll get to that after, but remember there was a whole thing with that, and I think that's why the whole CD <laughs> thing came out, because like I said, the, those were coming up next. They were easy to program, so that's what kind of started that whole fab. Yep. Um, all right, so let's move on to some uh, console. Oh, no, there's one more peripheral here that kind of got lost. The Game Boy Magnifier. I had that. I had it. I didn't have that. I just had to go blind instead. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you had that one with the light on it. Oh, that's the one I that's had. The one. That was the that's project. the one. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, and of course, it would suck up the battery. Suck up any battery you had. Left. And then, of course, you had like the speakers you get on the sides, which yeah. were better. And then it had like this other thing. Don't forget the land wire too. At one point, if you had everything, you had this big, huge monster thing you couldn't even put in your pocket. You rendered your portable Game Boy unportable. unportable. Exactly. <laughs> Most also, you got about ten to fifteen seconds of gameplay with all the juice coming off. It's still, one of the, right. it's still a great system. But well, all the peripherals were just awful. My, my magnifier with the light had its own had its own power supply, so, but you had to have four double A batteries in that thing. And that would so at that, that point, you're talking eight double A yep. batteries yeah. per session. Yep, the advanced that lithium. Lot, that, that, is a, <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of money spent that. on batteries. Yeah. I actually, my my dad got me this battery pack for my Game Boy. Yep. It was this big fucking pill that oh, had a yeah. belt oh, so on it. Jesus Christ! Nowadays, I, I nowadays I bitch and moan because the little battery warning light comes on my TV for my Bluetooth uh, controllers and I get ah, I gotta plug this thing in why do I have to plug this thing in every two weeks fuck this shit <laughs> <laughs> two days yeah the way I play it's every, yeah. like, every night alright let's move on to some consoles then uh, let's okay we'll go back to Atari for a little bit okay the Atari 5200 uh, yeah. the most earth shattering deep dog the most realistic just whole position at its best only the Atari 5200 Super System plays them. Moon Patrol with arcade graphics. Real sports baseball. You're out. Only on Super System. 2600 games, the adapter plays them all. The Atari 5200 Super System. Its only competition is you. Hey, here's the thing. We've got this incredibly popular console. Let's put another one out right now. <laughs> and it was like... Oh my god, it was a... Beast. It's probably the size of your t- little TV right there. Yeah. 
It was it, it was enormous. The controllers were known for not like breaking easily because it had a, a you know a the, very... the joystick wouldn't center. No, and it that looked was like a calculator. Why would I want did. to play with a calculator? Hey, you know what? And television had something on their calculator devices. And ClickoVision. And ClickoVision. Click click that's right. But I remember, like, the controllers were... They had a pause, but they were trying... Again, they were trying to be innovative with this, but the hardware inside just... They, they so let me get... They introduced it in 1982 at the height of Atari. The, the height of Atari. Now, keep in mind, the height of Atari for us, they knew some shit was going down. <laughs> yeah. True. They knew some shit was going down with the... Uh, Spielberg just came in here with two bags with dollar signs on them. I wonder what that means. <laughs> hey, as long as it doesn't have to be out by Christmas, I'm fucking happy right now. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, the Where's fi- my blow? Uh, yeah, the fifty two hundred. I'll, I'll admit, I only played a, yeah. I only, I only played a few games on the fifty two hundred. I don't think I could afford a fifty two hundred. No, um, well, from what I understand, one of my uncles won one in a card game. Didn't totally he, fall off the back he, of the truck. Yeah, he quote unquote won one, Mister DeSisto. Oh no no no! This was my aunt's second husband. So uh, so exactly how many of the other players Mr. had Gotti. <laughs> and, and in no way, and shape, or form, hooks? fell off the Could back of a truck somewhere <laughs> in um, Queens, New York. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Wait, wait. And the sports games are better. They're definitely an improvement on the the twenty six hundred well, single were, player football game. Well, it had a better processor. It did. It had a much better processor. Just the controls sucked. And you know, like, nobody wanted to play the games. And it wasn't backwards compatible. You know, it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm looking at, this, at the, the stats for it. They only sold one million units. Yeah. Which, when you consider how many PlayStations, Xboxes, are sold, and Nintendos are sold in one year. Right. This right. thing was think, sold for two years. They right. only sold one million units. Think about a, a current, you know, current day, quote but unquote, people, failed console. Well, that's, well... It, one this, million... This, this, there's really no failed consoles nowadays. I mean, no, the, P- the PS4 sells well, there's a 50 million units a year. Yeah, no, but there are only three consoles now. But when you think about it, I mean, look, how many? How many did the Wii U sell? The Wii U is considered you know, a failure. In, but in it, general, it's a, it's considered a failure because it didn't do as well as the Wii. Nothing was going to do as well as the Wii, though. But it's still sold. Would a phone be a better parallel? Like one of those weird third-party phones. Like the ones that go for like six or seven hundred dollars for one. Well, like that, the Amazon one. Oh, the Amazon yeah. phone. W- yeah. Would that be a better parallel? Oh, the original, yeah. the original Google phone. The Google phone. Yeah. Ooh. Hi, here's a Nexus that doesn't work with anybody's carriers. Oh, and then there's this one, and I just, you know, Mike, back to the video game years thing. I just found out this thing existed. You know about it? The Atari 7800. And this is one of those things that was supposed to compete with the NES, and it wasn't even close. The it, graphics were okay, but the sound processor was like... It was even, a 2600 pro- sound processor. And again, that's oh, probably because God, it was supposed really? to be like Nintendo, which basically was like a symphony compared right. to basically a kazoo. Right. They... It was supposed... The hardware dates back... Now, this is the hardware build. Dates back to 1984. The system was released in 1986. Oof. There's some oh, developments in there. Saying, a full year <laughs> since Nintendo released their console. Uh, well, if you really want to get into it, it, it really hit the American market in 86. It was released in 85. Uh, late, 85. Late, late 85. Late 85. But, it, but, it, but, it, but, the, fam- but the Famicom had been around right. since 84. Yeah. Right. It's funny, you wrote something they, re- they brought back the 2600. Basically, when they did that, they gave it the same look as the 7800. Basically. Right. Basically, it was like that streamlined They look. essentially put it out for $50 in 1988 dollars. Um, and then they said they were going to resell all the games in the store. Why? <laughs> I have a Nintendo now. Why would I want to? I think to? they probably figured that since Nintendo kind of brought everything back, we are going to try again to see if they can bring this back. But again, the 7800 was, was already behind the time. It was already obsolete. Right. The, and, you know, and again, uh, that was, they, they allowed the game, the 2600 games to be backwards compatible. And you had the Sega Master System that came out too, which wasn't as popular, but it still was a better system for what it was. It was a better system, but master system. the Master System, the thing with it, we had a conversation about this, about the, the, the boxes for the Master System. All the games for the Master System essentially were a blue, like almost like graph paper. With Sega Master System, the name of the game, and then like a picture in like the lower left corner. Oh, you shared one of those. Yeah, the the wrestling one yeah. that Mike yeah. showed us. Yeah, the, the one where he got his own head. Yeah, in, in the headlock. 
That doesn't show me gameplay. That just shows me goofy animation. The best part was, because some of the games were on those cards. Yeah. And the best part was, the thing would actually have, here's the game box, and there's a hand holding the card <laughs> on the game box. Right. It doesn't even really show it, it just shows the card with like a little, like, the name of the game on it. That's, that's it. Well, now, the wrestling guy could be indicative of a game, just not that game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was Decap Attack, there was Dynamite Heady. <laughs> it did have, I'll tell you, Mass thing. System did yeah. have one of the best versions of Ghostbusters, though. Yes. It was actually well, that was also, that was essentially a re-render of the, the PC, Man, the that, Commodore yeah, game. That, that controller is a study on failed ergonomics. Oh, what? The Master System controller? No, the Sega, the uh, Atari 7800. Oh, God, yes. It's got the joystick with the two... But, uh, fire buttons on the sides. But it actually worked, though. Mm. Well, yeah, well than... the, it was the No, the the joystick was an improvement on the 5200 joystick. Yes. Meaning it didn't fall over. Right. Like, <laughs> there's no other drunk. buttons on it. Go home, 5200, you Controller, drunk. two buttons, that was it. Right. It was but that just easier. didn't feel... Even if you're feel, used to an Atari have, controller... It doesn't have a natural feel to it. No. Right. It just, you know, if you think about that... <laughs> All right, so the next thing on our list, uh, the Atari Jaguar. Some of you believe your system is the most advanced in the universe. Let's review the numbers. Sega Genesis is 16 bits. 3DO is 32 bits. The Atari Jaguar is 64 bits. Which is more advanced? Clifford! Hmm? 16 and 32 are less than 64. So with 64 bits, 3D graphics, real-world animation, and lightning speed that you can only get with Jaguar, which is more advanced? Clifford! Can you repeat the question? Jaguar! 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 The Jaguar. There was 64 oh. bits when it really wasn't. Right, exactly. It was 32 plus 32. And that big, like, controller, they also had, like, the number oh, pad yeah. on it. Oh, oh yeah. my god. What was with them and the number pads? It had one launch title. It's educational, Andy. Educational. <laughs> it had one launch title. Trevor McFur and the Crescent Galaxy. <laughs> that was a couple, though. No, no, no. Like, it, it, it was like three of them. They had one it, game it, at it was, launch. It was no, one, I thought there was like two or three There was one game that was packaged with it, and then Trevor McFur was was sold as a launch title. Oh, Trevor oh, McFur was, was the please drop your hard-earned money on this game, you suckers. Yeah. Then there was that one flight like game. was like a fight. It was weird. Did you learn to fly every time you got hit or something like that? Oh, God. It was awful. Joe, may I have a, uh, a slice of the spicy cheese, please? My blood is boiling, and I need to... Uh, that's gonna help. <laughs> I really, I have really almost no memory of the Jaguar, other than it came out. I mean, it came, it came out in the basically. worst possible fucking time. Well, then there was the just CD, a, the CD a, attachment, which basically, if you look at it, it looked like a freaking toilet. Just as <laughs> it does. Just as the SNES was at the height of its popularity. Mm. Yeah. I just mainly remember the commercial for it, where a guy had like a light bulb screwed into his head. He's like. And suddenly he would go off and like, why would I spend such and such on the uh, like the Sega Saturn when I could buy this for a lot cheaper? Because the Saturn was a lot better, you jack- jackass. Yeah, what you paid Saturn for. Saturn or Genesis? Uh, Gen- Genesis, Genesis. Genesis. Yeah. Actually, yes. Hmm. There's only two games available. Hmm. Genesis has a lot more. I'd be a fool not to buy this. <laughs> $250 in 1993 dollars. $250. I mean, at least with like the Switch now, they had one launch shot, but that was Legend of Zelda. Right. I mean, which is like an iconic character. Oh, yeah. And like to game. mention the fact they had a shitload of stuff just waiting to wait, come out. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. Also, it's a big enough like open world game that they had... Putting that out bought them time to put the rest of the shit out. Exactly. exactly. Are you saying that Trevor McFur was not an iconic character? Absolutely. I don't even think you can find an emulation of it right now. It two hundred two hundred fifty. Nothing will beat Dana Plato's character from Night Trap. So remember that. <laughs> That's Night true. Awesome. It, it sold for two hundred fifty dollars in nineteen ninety three. Only yeah, sold only for three probably. years. Was discontinued in nineteen ninety six. Guess how many units they sold? How many? Five. Less than two hundred fifty thousand. Mm. That's pretty bad. Oh. Wait. So the 252, because I remember that was a big thing. Most consoles, I think, were 199. Yes. Yep. Yes. For the most. That was part, the yeah. big thing. That's and the and then that was the price 299. Point. Yeah. Well, I think it was between 100 and 200 because some were even like I know even like I think like like Nintendo came out was like 100 bucks. Well, well, it was, the, 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 the Super NES was 150. The PlayStation came out around was 199. Was 90, 199. And yeah. the Sega Saturn was 199. Yeah. I remember well, I that was this higher. In the in the book, um, the the history of video games, that was like the big thing. Is that PlayStation was ready to roll, one ninety nine, ready to go. Yeah. Um, Sega, one ninety nine, ready to go. Atari went first, two fifty. Two fifty. All right. 
<laughs> Good luck. Good luck with that. Let me know how that works out for you. With you and with your one game. Exactly. How many games do we got? Um, we got a few more than one. Um, all of them. <laughs> Oh boy, I have no, I really have almost yeah, no, no memory of that one. All right, but here's one though that Steve calls uh, a cool concept. If the concept was to put a system in games at a price point so high, its only purpose was to give rich douchebags something else to brag about. That's right, I'm talking about the Neo Geo. <laughs> you ever see how big those cartridges are? are? Oh my god, the cartridges were Things, like the size of like, like, a, like a Atari. Yeah, no, the cartridge was like. Yeah, and did you have to screw um, actually, them no, the in? cartridge was probably about maybe like the, the diameter size of your iPad. Of the iPad, basically. Yeah. Did you um, have to screw oh, them God. into the... There was no, something I think, you, no, I think you had to put... But the thing about the Neo Geo was, because they were coming out with the arcade ports, and if you had, like, a save card, and you could, like, bring your card to the arcade, play the game there, yep. and, like, have a... So there was, like, a feature where you could actually go back and forth. Again, good idea, but again, the thing was, again, 800, 800 bucks. Nothing says, I'm getting laid tonight. Like, oh. uh, hey, hey, baby, before we leave... Boop. Saving. Let me play some, saving. Wait, saving. Let's play some Turf Masters. <laughs> <laughs> the games were just. They were good games, though. They were good games, but they were unspectacular. Wait, wait a second. Hey, let's Samurai, Samurai Showdown. Was Samurai a Showdown time. in the arcade. Samurai Showdown was awesome. I love that game. In the oh, arcade. So, so I the bowling game, game was game. good. Metal the, Slug. Uh, Metal, Metal Slug. Slug. Oh yeah. Metal Slug. That one. The, a, lot, a lot of those games. Oh, was it King of Fighters? Was another good one. Yep. King of Fighters. Fury. Yep. So there were a lot of good titles. But again, like I said, trying to own one of those systems. But a lot of those games were ports on, like, right. they were could afford. Right, they were ports, yeah. So you could actually play them. But wait, wait, Except Samurai Showdown. I've never, so, I've never seen a port. So you're playing Metal... You know, like, uh, yeah, that's one. You're playing, oh, yeah, you're yeah, playing yeah. all these games on your system at home. Like, hey, Mom, can I go to the mall and play this game that I was just playing right now? I need, what? I, to show I, off. I need five, exactly. Mom, I need five dollars and quarters so I can play this game that I can play right here. <laughs> for free. For free. Exactly. I need it so I can go Don't you have this mall. game at home? Shut up, Mom! <laughs> Didn't I spend eight hundred dollars so you could play this at home? What? Yeah, and you still don't love me. But wow. the mall! You don't let me do anything, Mom. You don't understand me. You're not my real father! <laughs> Jim! <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god! Oh, we just we just Went deep, didn't we? Yep. <laughs> um, no, seriously though, it's like, has anyone actually gone online to look to see how much one of these things retails for? Like, uh, oh, there we go. We're gonna eBay it. All right, we're gonna <laughs> oh, eBay so this thing right now. I can't Hold fucking on. imagine. We're eBaying it. I just, I just, I'm like, and this might just be a false memory implanted through Inception, but. Didn't you buy a system that was like one of these obscure systems, yeah, like about one ninety two on eBay, one hundred ninety two dollars. Yes. One hundred and ninety-two dollars. I shit you not. How many games comes with it? I don't know. Well, I got one here for six forty-nine. Two working tested games. Two working tested games. We started lost. Two. Two. Wow. Okay. Our games are ten bucks. Well then, that was money well oh, spent. The, well, Mom. the CD. I'm sorry. The CD ones were. Oh, and it's coming from Japan, so it's there's no guarantee that it'll work on the. Uh, uh, with the, well, well, with our Gaijin electricity? <laughs> no, no. It, it, it's a the, different the, system. Coding. Regional yeah, coding. Pa- yeah. Regional coding. It'll have a right. PAL system versus NTSC. Oh, <laughs> it's all going to be in Japanese, too. <laughs> exactly. Got the pocket. That's okay. And that's nerd. He's, he's, he's good at one speed. Yeah, I've watched enough Gundam so I can probably pick something up. <laughs> exactly. Hey, big Sam. Did you ever see that Game Grumps video? Yes. It was like, guys, like, I think I'll pick a big Sam. <laughs> one guy goes, Yeah, I'm going to pick big Sam. Big Sam. Oh, you pass a big Sam. <laughs> All right, next uh, up. Super Robot Wars. Next up. Oh, uh, we were just talking about this one the Sega Saturn. Uh. There's never been a game like Sega Saturn's Nights. Never been a game that's allowed you to fly fluid and free in real time 3D. Never not anywhere. But especially not on that other system. Simply because, with only one processor, it doesn't have the power to do it. Fly, plaything, fly. You're not ready. Yeah, Sega! Oh, it boy. would be hard for us to, to say the Sega Saturn was a failure. I, I had it. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that that was a failure. Again, it was just Sega was now kind of not doing well. It was trending down. Exactly. That was the well, again. Well, the, pro- the, the, problem, the problem, too, is PlayStation came out in 95. It revolutionized, essentially revolutionized the right. console, the console yep. industry. Sega was still, view, didn't, Sega viewed Nintendo as their primary competitor, right. not PlayStation. Right. So, yeah, you can put, Sega Saturn 
But do you know kids. anybody who owned one oh, yeah. besides Mike? I, I did. Plenty I knew of, a guy. That I knew plenty one. of guys in college that owned a Saturn. I knew. I knew nobody, and I was in my mid twenties at this point. Knew adults who had you know their own money, and well, it did have Craig the Walrus Stadler on one of the golf games, and every time you got, you did some he's like, nice par. <laughs> With that big end of the mustache, you go like, you know, I was like, go like, Yumpin' Yiminy or something like that. I mean, the the Die Hard game no. was really, really fun, but it had nothing to do with the movies. Oh, boo! Zero to do with the movies, but it was a very fun. Plus, they took out Christmas because PC culture is killing us. <laughs> I know um, their version, I think it was Symphony of the Night, was on there, I think. Castlevania? Yeah, but I think in that one, you could actually play as Richter. You could go back and play as Richter if you put the right color Did you in. see him at the party? Richter? <laughs> see the party? <laughs> See you at the party, Richter. Welcome uh, to the party. party. All right, so okay, so we'll, we'll exclude the Saturn then, and move on to the Turbo Graphics. That wasn't really a bad system either, though. But again, it was one of those those, those systems that people just couldn't afford. Was it wasn't this, that expensive. It wasn't. Was really this the, the one you seat. bought? I remember there were there was one system you bought. This unless, wasn't it. This wasn't it. Okay, what was it? Because again, I, I it was a three DO. A three DO. Well, you bought a three DO. Oh my no, god! For, no, for cheap though, it was like forty bucks. Oh wow! Yeah, no, I didn't buy like the original price. So it was, no, no, it was, it was like when when it finally kind of leveled down. Right. I, I, like, we'll talk about when we get to the list. Yeah, but I couldn't remember which one. If it was inceptioned in, it was one of the ones you had in Shag Palace. So, oh, yeah. uh, so wait, wait, Shag Palace. Was there a difference between the Turbo Graphics and the Turbo Graphics sixteen? I don't no, even that's what fucking it was, Turbo know. Graphics sixteen. Okay. Introducing TurboGrafx-16, the next generation video game system. It's four times faster, so the games are more exciting. There are almost ten times as many colors, so the arcade quality graphics are even more intense. And you can expand your system with a CD player for CD games with sound effects that are turbocharged. TurboGrafx-16 from NEC, the higher energy video game system. The Turbo Graphics itself was not really that expensive. It was pretty comparable to the other prices and actually did very well. Then you had the Sega CD, no, the um, the Turbo Graphics CD. That was like five hundred bucks. Oh, that's where it was expensive. That's mid-90s where mid nineties money. And that's where they yep. kind of killed it. But there was a lot of things. Again, one well, thing is there was again a lot of peripherals for that. If you wanted to play like enhance it, like for example, if you wanted audio video, you had to get an attachment on the back so you could like you know press the, put those in. Um, then of course the Sega CD. Well, I mean, not, I keep saying Sega CD, but yeah. TurboGrafx CD. TurboGrafx CD. Which again, five hundred bucks was ridiculously expensive. Yeah. But they had a great port yeah. of Street Fighter, which they had to call Fighting Street because of legal nit reasons. Right. I just, all right, and maybe it's just me because I just remember there was a glut of systems out at the time, and the only ones that were left left standing by the end of the nineties were the PlayStation, well, the PlayStation. whatever was out at Nintendo, chance. and that and was Sega, about it. And Sega. And Sega, yeah. If you ever get a chance, try to find the Turbo Graphics promo video. These two guys are playing it, and like at one point, it's like here's the Sega, here's the uh, Turbo Graphics CD, and the guys like, and you can put your music CDs in. The guys like going like they're doing like this one, guys going like this, and it was like so corny and ridiculous. I remember they're playing games oh, like God. this, and they're going like this, you know, going you know like it was just ridiculous. I remember it was like years ago um, at the Marlboro, the, the Trade Center in Marlboro yeah. by uh, Best Western, they had a Turbo Graphics like Trade Center where. They had Turbo Graphics all over the place, so like different games, like five TVs set up with each game, so you could play each one. And when you got in, you got a free complimentary video of the game of the games that are out and the soon to be games that are oh. coming out. It was actually kind of funny; it was like 15 minutes long. I, I, the only games I remember for the Turbo Graphics were Bonk. Bonk's Adventure and Bonk's Revenge. <laughs> you remember Keith Courage? Nope. That was um, what you came with. All right, let's move on to the Philips CDI. Now, this one is genuinely a terrible game system. Oh, yeah. Well, now, oh, come yeah. on. Oh, boy. Andy, oh, God, yeah. They had great games like The Flowers of Robert Maplethorpe. <laughs> Excuse me? There was a game called The Flowers of Robert Maplethorpe. <laughs> that, that, you know what you did? Did they look, like, did they look you, you, like flowers? You could either look at it, you could prim the flowers or whatever, and there's a little music that would go behind it. You just sat there and just kind of looked at it. That's all it was. But then, of course, it gave us the wonderful Legend of Zelda games. The, yeah. the, the one of Gamalion, I think? Look up, yeah. the ga- look up Game Grumps on that one. It's, Excuse it's me, princess! Oh, oh God. It, it, just look up the Game Grumps video. They do a whole a series of it. Yeah. And there's one point the theme song, that map theme goes... Doo, 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 doo. Oh. And, of course, Dan, who's one of the guys, goes, Looks like you got a baby penis. <laughs> Looks like he kept singing it over and over again every time. Which Mario game did they come up with? Mario Math? No. No, it was uh, 
Hotel Mario. Oh, oh it, yes. God. But I remember there was one scene where the guy's trying to play, like, the like, Lonnie Gamelon, and he's going through a thing where you could use the flute to, like, freeze characters. And at one point he kept doing this, oh, I can finally get through this board. All of a sudden said, you tried to use it, not enough rupees. He's like, I have to use rupees to blow a flute? <laughs> <laughs> it was Link, the Faces of Evil, and Zelda, the one of Gamaliel. Oh, God. And then Zelda's I, Again, and I, I, I know I've told the story before about the CDI being advertised incessantly on the first Turkey Day Marathon on yeah. MST. Yeah. Oh, that, that boy. That was, uh, 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 I don't remember the... Afterburn. Afterburn, yes. This game that was just crazy with graphics that didn't appear in the game. And, and they were so intense they made the guy's eyes pop out and explode. In the commercial. Yeah. It, it was. Yeah. That makes me want to drop it. Whatever. Oh, no, no, no. It was Burn Cycle. Imagine a CD ROM that immerses you into a wicked predicament. A pawn in the war to control the human mind. You're playing Burn Cycle. The CD ROM action adventure game. You experience mind expanding extended gameplay. You navigate fantastic 3D worlds. The end game is a shocking conclusion. Use your brain or lose your mind. Burn Cycle, the CD ROM action adventure game. On sale in software stores now. Oh, okay. cycle. oh, I remember Burn that. That was like cycle. a psychedelic game or whatever. Yeah. That seems there was like another an one that came out of money to have called. my eyeballs explode. Right. Like, I'm pretty sure I could recreate that. Yeah, keep in mind, that. this is $19.94. <laughs> dollars like, then there was a hell, hell of a cyberpunk adventure. <laughs> oh, God. That was, and if you're lucky, you had to go through a computer that had the guy from the 7-Up, the guy that said from the 7-Up commercial, yeah. read you oh, everything. God. If you didn't do it right, this game was oh. And I know... That if you bought a big game system like that, you wanted to spend 40 bucks to get a video game version of Connect 4. Yep. <laughs> I remember also that Electronics Boutique, rest in peace, yeah. um, had the CDI, and they had, like, they would actually put out movies on CD thing. They weren't DVDs. They were CD-ROMs of movies. Actually, they're... The, that they're looked v- as good as they, you would expect it to look. Weren't they VCDs or something like that? Video, yeah. Video, yeah. CDs. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, it looked like a Sega CD, like grain, that grainy Sega CD oh, look. Oh, God. But they had a deal with Paramount, so they actually got Forrest Gump before anybody else. I, I oh. will give the CDI credit... Their version of Dragon's Lair and Dragon's Lair 2 were spot on. To well, the it was actually the fuck so. Yeah. Well, I mean, the idea of the CDI wasn't supposed to be like a game console. It's supposed to be an it's entertainment Like system. a multimedia yeah. type thing. Like the so latter again, day PlayStation. But, you know, it's one of those things where as much as it sucked, it, the concepts are used in a lot of things today. Yeah. So you figure that, yeah, it sucked, it didn't do it right, but thankfully for them, they found people that could do these things right. Right. So, some good game out of it. All right. So next up, the Atari Lynx. Remember this? Oh my the god! The handheld system that apparently used like nine D cell batteries for maybe for forty five minutes of, of continuous gameplay. I think that was high. I think you got like thirty. Oh my god! I'm trying to remember who Joe in your class had one. Was it Jamie, Jamie Sawyer? Jamie Sawyer. That's right. And he called me, I believe, quote a retard yep. because I loved my Game Boy. Yep. He's like, I get color and I can play left handed. And I can play for more than 15 minutes. <laughs> yep. Have got recognizable games. Oh, and by the way, my hands didn't catch fire with all the power you're rotting through right now. Oh my god, single-handedly destroying the planet. Exactly. And you ever seen this thing? Oh, it's huge. I mean, oh, yeah, I think it was about that big. The, the thing, I mean, a shitload of plastic for a little like a, screen that was about mm, that. Yeah, it was, it was a Game Boy screen on the side of a Chipotle burrito. Basically. Right. But it was like, it was seizure-inducing indu- seizure because the lines, the lines of resolution were very, very visible. Right. Whoa. And it was very, it was very, very made it tough to look at. It was similar to the Game Gear. Yeah. The Sega Game Gear was yeah. the same. There was another one very much like that. Oh. Yes, which was a little bit gear. better, but... You had a Game Gear. I had a Game Gear. Hey, everybody, gear. Mike had a Game Gear. Which was okay. That's what Six AA man. batteries for yep. three to five hours. God, that seems almost quaint nowadays, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, next up. Virtual Boy. Uh, yeah. Hey, Mike, you want to talk yes, about you had a visual? Virtual Boy. You had a Virtual Boy. Had a virtual oh, boy. I had a Virtual Boy. Tell the story, Mike. You didn't uh, actually go out and buy this thing, did you? No, we won it in a raffle. The raffle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think we had... <laughs> it was a major award. I can only remember... <laughs> uh, I can only remember, where, I think, two games for it. Tennis, which came with it, I believe. Yeah, it was uh, Wario Tennis. Oh, God. 
And I don't remember the other one. Oh, like you want to talk like, about seizure inducing? There was like two games that were actually decent for, but yeah, like I said, give, thing give you a headache. After oh yeah, like five it, was, it was all just red lines, and because it was I like mean, that's all it was, and you're looking at it just like and you get a headache just from using the. I thing. mean, it's it did look like 3D, but you had to like you had to like, can't guess where the controllers were because you had to keep your eyes in this little little visor. Did you guys ever do like early to mid '90s virtual reality? Once it was confusing as fuck when I did it. I got uh, stuck lawn, under. All I can think is Lawnmower Man. Yeah, and there was a bad SNES game for that too. Of course, there was. There's a bad SNES game for every movie that came oh, out. I know. And Home I Home know. Game. Oh god, that, that thing's just unwieldy. Yeah. How well, in the fuck? I mean, seriously, when you put that on a table, all right, guys, I can't do anything right the now. The best part is the yeah, boy uh, appendage at the end of the name indicates that that thing is allegedly one of their portable systems. Mm. Yeah. No, there's nothing portable about no. it. No. No, you have to put it in a golf bag. And of course, you're trying to find a, a, like a comfortable table to sit at. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You, could, you had to put it on the table, but then you had to lean forward <laughs> to keep. And your, you didn't get like that, you know, that like Doctor Chin strap when you went to the eye doctor. So you yeah, one of those. Oh, yeah. Good. So if you like, if you like, moved your head so much that the image would like shift, and you had to move it back to keep it in focus. It was, it was just terrible. It was, yeah. There's there's an image of the. Of the Mario Tennis. Oh, good God. Yeah. That would drive me. Yeah, drive I me remember. Nuts. There was oh. that one. There was another one I seem to recall kicking a shell. Um, which just, really nails like, it down. My eyes just Mark, went in opposite game, directions. Like. It was almost like yeah. soccer or something like that. I'm just trying to find a, get a list of there all the games. There were only 40-some like games, I think. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't it, that many. It was, there weren't that many games. Did you say 40? Not, maybe not even that many. I was going to say, yeah, I think I'm fairly certain there was, yeah. 20? Um, I'd be shocked if it was it was twenty. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it all fits on one screen here. Yeah, I I could probably read. There's this at least like, twenty. There's at least twenty on that list, oof. roughly. Yeah, or just about. Probably there. Then Honda car going back. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the next one. Oh, Mike, you and I can talk at length about this one. First. Oh, the Nokia N gauge. You guys had N gauges? No, I didn't. No, we one. never owned them. But, but I remember. But I remember when we heard about them. And we were talking about, remember one time we had a conversation way back in our early days, and unfortunately, basically, we first talk about the system of how to use the thing, and then you can talk about how you talked into it. Right. So, oh, so basically, it was a phone, to play the game, it was yes. a phone. So basically, to play the games, oh, yeah. you had to turn the thing around, unscrew the back panel, not pop it out, unscrew it. Then you had to take the battery out. Then you had to take the game out. Then you could get another game, put the game in. Put the battery pack back in, screw the panel back on, and lo and behold, you could play the game. They actually did fix this later. <laughs> they, they fixed it. <laughs> and then, too. when you wanted to make a phone call, Andy. All right, what you that would design, do is... Hold on. That design engineer deserves to be bitch slapped. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, keep in mind, it looked like a taco shell, okay? So, it, you know, it essentially, it was shaped like a taco shell. So, you got the so, bottom with the curve. With well, the, the curve on the bottom, flat on the top, and guess where you talked into it? The curve. No. The bottom. From the spine. You honestly look oh, like you had no, you know what? a big inflated dopey ear. I will make it my life's mission to find that design engineer and bitch slap him because oh, that is that, that is violates just, every that is that, 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 that violates look every, at this. I, look, yeah. That <laughs> violates <laughs> every this was rule. A running joke. Every rule of design engineering principles. You know, if you if you hold that picture a little closer to Joe, I'm pretty sure his face will melt off uh, like in an Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> the, I mean, I will, I will say I'm not a very good designer. That's why I don't, I don't they do did it fix anymore. It. But even I know. Yeah, they, they fixed it, but not enough. I mean, no. this was the precursor to being able to download games on your phone. This I mean, was, this you know was... What, you know what this was? This was also a precursor to the to DS. smartphones. I mean, right. Like, this was like precursor technology used for the DS later. Right, right. right. Now, the thing is, is that with the, with this system... I mean, this came out in, I think, 2002. So, smartphones really became, you know, became five year, prevalent. Five, year, five years before the iPhone. And About, it's yeah, five years before the iPhone. We're exactly. looking at a list here. Yeah. There's actually a lot of, like, decent titles you yeah. know. Like Tiger Woods, Tom Clancy stuff. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. To, to, uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I mean, you're hearing actually good, these like, are, actual good I titles. I have these played are, portable Tomb Raiders before. They all suck. Yeah, well, this I, one wasn't I, great, either. I, I, Got Tomb Raider for the Wii. I've never even tried it. I played Tomb Raider for the Game Boy Advance, and it was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Any others you got there? 
games you want to talk about before we move on to the next one? Let's move on. And I'm, I'm just, I'm, and I'm doing this one. I know, Mike, you love this system. But I, if, I, I love it too. In, a, a, every, a lot of people love this I system. I still own but it. But in the grand scheme of just, the, you couldn't have put a system out at a possibly worse time. That's true. It's a failure only because, like you said, the timing of it. Yeah. The, it's this, a, it's the not Sega a, Dreamcast it's, it's, it's is what we're the PlayStation 1.5. No. It's not a, it's no, fa- it's it's not a failure of a system. It's a failure no. of marketing and merchandise. Exactly. Yes. This, the, the Sega Dreamcast well, was so ahead of its this time. Was their right Hail Mary. This was their Hail Mary. This was their Hail Mary. But, but, they, but the thing is, they nailed it. They did. Yeah. In terms of the actual hardware and the, the actual gameplay... They nailed it. I mean, this awesome. this car this but the problem was they made it to the playoffs and they blew it and that was yeah. half the problem. Well, it was the mar- part of it was the market. right. But part the of it there wasn't any third party support for it, so they right. didn't, they weren't going to make their money back on the, on right. the hardware. And of course, you had like you know those great those little uh, the little save cards. The ones that had the little LCD the little screens. Save cards. The on- you could, you know, online. You could play, yep. Online play, which was revolutionary for its time. And it actually yeah. was very easy to hook up too. It was a very easy set, uh, and, setup. And they came out just as DSL was starting to take, take off. So there was broadband ready yep. for them. Yeah. No, but again, time. But you could burn the games. Yes, yes. you could. No, Which you, probably didn't do the them any favors. Yeah. Right. And the other I'll thing, I remember one. hearing a, a strange urban myth about if you hooked one into a network... Like it would pretty much be recognized as a member of that network, regardless of firewalls and yeah. stuff. Yes. So it was. But I mean, this was the two, greatest this was, game yeah. ever. This was two thousand one. Right. Steve does bring up a point also about this. Hey, yeah. Dreamcast fanboys, if Dreamcast failed because the games are so easy to pirate, then it was your fucking fault. <laughs> um, I never pirated any games. Uh, no, I'm sure. I mean, it was nineteen ninety nine. It was what six months before the PlayStation Two got released. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, two thousand. Yeah, PlayStation Two. And I think PlayStation 2000. Two was so on par with everything. Right. Exactly. Well, the, that know, was when it came out. It like I said, it had a lot of launch titles for it. Um, a lot of launch titles. The DVD compatibility that was, was huge. huge. That was a, that was a big factor. That was a huge because thing. the Dreamcast didn't have that. No. no, not well. Then again, neither did the Xbox. No, it, we had the original get, Xbox. Well, I think the original. No. I think the original you had to, or no, no, the original one. Xbox did not have the it. original right. Xbox didn't have it. The other uh, one you had, the a, you, had Xbox, pay, you had to pay to get it activated or something like the that. The Xbox 360 had HD. No, no it didn't no, have HD DVD. No, HD, it didn't have HD, HD, HD DVD. Yeah, they had right. HD DVD compatibility, which nobody ever used. And no, can we say hey, listen, say had a beta X, uh, beta max for us too. Yeah, right. really, laser discs. Right. Oh, it was so good. But um, yeah, I mean, I remember Mike playing much. Awesome was, it was, so like, was the, the system was a really solid system. Soul Calibur was a great game for that. Oh, Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur. Oh. My Their version of Marvel vs. Capcom was so good. Virtual yeah. Fighter was awesome. I love yeah, Virtual Fighter. My favorite, Fighter. my favorite was Power Zone. It was just, it was anime esque and like the th- fully three D um, interactive battle battle arenas. Like you, you could grab, you could run, grab a pole, swing around, and do a flying kick into the. Oh, dead, on, dead on uh, Dead on Arrival. Love that fighting game, the OA. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, Actually, yeah, the Resident yeah. Evil Code Veronica. Resident Evil Code Veronica was very good for it when yep. it came out. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, it was a great side story with both the Resident. Like it was way. I mean, graphically oh. compared to the, pl- the, the original PlayStation Two, it yeah. was. And actually, was it? Ahead. And also, the sports games, the two K games. Were actually they were very smooth and they, and they yeah. and they have game I mean games are considered classics like now like Crazy Taxi is considered a classic Crazy right. yep. Taxi Jet Set Radio is considered a oh, classic. Great. one, yeah, one, one great of game. the best RPGs I've ever played was on Dreamcast it was uh, fortunately they made it they made it for, uh, port for it for the GameCube um, Skies of Arcadia well, that's when yeah. we were on a ship right yeah, yeah. A, fl- yeah. a flying ship it was like uh, the there was like no ocean but it was like yeah you're a yeah. sky pirate basically. Yeah. So good. All right. So amazingly good. All right. Fantasy Star. Oh my God. <laughs> like, you, like I said, you could go I didn't on. Like Fantasy Star. No, you could go on about this, but it, or it, just it, about the failures, uh, failures like, of these. Right, systems. but it's not. That's the thing. It's it, I, it's hard for me to classify it as a failure, just because it got everything so right. In terms I would just of say it's not so much the Dreamcast failure. It was Sega. It was Sega. 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 Yeah, Sega. Yeah, Sega. Yeah, it was only Sega's team. failure at the yeah. end. Yeah. So. All right. So the next one up. Okay. No game system Mike owned. Yeah, I still own it. The Nintendo Wii U. Yeah, I really just it, it just it was like the poor man's Wii. It was no, no, no. Well, it was not it, poor man's. It was, it was the poor man's Xbox. It was Kinect. a Wii. Just it, it was like a Wii HD. It's, All right. more, it's more like a yes. poor, it's more like a poor man's Nintendo Switch. This is 
Chappelle season three. Okay. All right. Okay. This is it had the loftiest of expectations. I mean, the 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 sales of the Nintendo Wii were Amazing. insane, yeah. insane, and you couldn't find them for like again. Years. A bit like Nintendo, let's do do. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. You could not find one to save your life because right. that's what Nintendo does. But when they released the Wii U, it almost felt like, why? You could find a Why are you releasing this? Because they uh, they wanted HD. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 pub, the market said, we, Basically, you have to have Wii, it, it was HD. Wii HD. Right. Yeah, right. well, because they... And it came with a pad. Because when they released the Wii, they, uh, they're like, oh, we're not going HD, we're just doing 40p. And then they came out, and then they had PlayStation 3, and... Xbox 360. That was doing 180. Yeah. And. Or 1020. 1080. 1080. I'm sorry. 1080. 1080. And so they Not came just out, 1080, 1080p. They yeah. Came out with the Wii U, which was basically the Wii, but instead of the. Uh, instead of the. Like the. The wrist hand. Yeah, the, the, the Wii Motes, you had a. The, you had a little mini screen. Yeah. Yeah. It which obviously tower. worked out in the end because. Well, I don't know anyone Switch. who hates the Switch. No. I don't know a single person who hates the Switch. I'm loving it. Oh, yeah. The only, the only problem is uh, my my dock uh, died. Oh no! So I can still play it, but if I want to watch it on my TV, I got to buy a new dock, and they're ninety bucks. Uh, really? How'd your dock die? It just stopped working. You yeah. got a year warranty on that thing. Uh, well, it's been a past the year right now, I think. No, God, no. Really? No, yeah, the it hasn't been. Yeah, it came out in March. March. It hasn't been out that long. So yeah, I would check on that. Come on, Mike. We all know this. Uh, um. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to say. I mean, there weren't really a whole lot of like. You know, gangbuster games. No, that anyone really talks about it's just no. You know, uh, and, and Mario Nintendo, Maker, Super Mario <laughs> Maker was big. Yeah, and Nintendo kind of just quietly put it aside and just as the Switch quietly was kinda, took just, it out to a pasture and. Just, yeah, hey, look, we're coming. Said out. to look at the rabbits. No, you know what it yeah. was? Is, hey, look, we're coming out with a Nintendo Entertainment System Classic. Yep. Hey, they did look re- over here for the NES. They oh. did release an HD version of both Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. Yeah, I heard that both, those were good. Oh, those are amazing. But that brings us to the Nintendo. The do, any- do I do that now? Or you want to want to do that last? Or you want to do it now? No, we'll do it now. Okay. All right. The the because we're on the topic of Nintendo. Um, the NES Classic. Be- it, it, the only reason why this is a failure because Nintendo apparently hates money. Still yeah. want one. That was. I still want one. Too. That was the only funny thing is that was. And I'm going. I'm probably going. I'm going to probably try to get a Super NES tomorrow. I, I, we got, I, got oh, this e- tomorrow? I got an email from Toys R Us saying, "Hey, we're going to have the N- Super I, NES." I, I have Midnight an- Sale Walmart. Where? I, when? Tonight, tonight, tonight. they, they go on sale tomorrow. Anywhere. Yeah, I uh, haven't decided. Seven o'clock in the morning. I haven't decided. I have. Get home and go to Walmart. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. That's fine. Because uh, those, the list of games is amazing. Yeah. Oh my god. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to go through with the pre-order I did for um, South Park, the, the uh, Fracture But Whole. Oh, I am. Because I, I can't Or I mean, I don't have the money to like really like throw in a whole bunch of video games. So I want something I'm going to play a lot of. Or roll that money into an SNES classic, because you know Aaron at GameStop is our connection for everything. So we got you your NES classic. Yeah. Well, for that's, what you, that's how you get my NES classic. classic too. Well, I've heard two stories. Number one, they're supposed to re-release the NES classic yeah. in, in, uh, this next summer. I've heard about that too. Yeah. And the other thing is, apparently, they have made a lot more hardware. In other words, they're going to try to do more in-store sales. Than online to try to curb the scalpers. Yeah, obviously you can still get probably people scalpers. So like they like selling maybe one, maybe two to a person. Right. So if anybody wants but, to buy me one, I'm more than happy to pay you. Yeah, the NES Classic. I mean, the NES Classic is I I own one and I fucking love it. Um, the game selection, the initial game selection, is really really good. There's a lot of sequels without their. Um, well, they are predecessors. Your, well, because the predecessors C- suck. So just, well, well, like, you oh, get Double Super Dragon C- 2, you mm-hmm. don't get Double Dragon 1. You get Mega Man 2, you don't get uh, Mega Man 1. Because they were the better sellers. That's right. But you're right, they're considered the cla- Mega Man yeah. 2. Yeah, Double Dragon 2 is a lot better than Double Dragon It is, uh, in every way, shape, and form. And then, but, of course, in, but it goes the opposite, you get Super C, not Contra. Right. And well, you're wondering what, what, the, what the rights were there, because I mean, you're because figuring... It's Konami, it's Konami, yeah, Konami. Right, because like I said, Konami's just being a dick. Well, those are a popular one. We'll give you this one. Well, what about... I mean, I, what I don't like understand is, is because there's shitloads of memory left on that thing, they couldn't have done all of the D-pad controller black box games. You think they would? They could have easily have done all of them. They didn't. There's a lot of stuff missing on there, but they've made it so... Easy to hack that a moron like myself can do it. Yeah, 
Yeah. Thanks true. for agreeing with me on the moron part. No, buddy. no just the ease of hacking. Yeah. And it is, did you hack yours? No. no. Okay, I did. And the, it's amazing what you can put on there. And the uh, Hacksy uh, program that I have allows you to actually put box art on there, like the original box art, which is why for this SNES classic, when I get Phalanx, I'm going to have to... Uh, <laughs> get, get Banjo Phalanx. Man. Yeah, Banjo Man on there. Act Razor. Yeah. Act Razor. Oh, Act Razor was, was awesome. You know, that's the thing about the SNES, just sidebar just a second. There were two games I was hoping they put on there they didn't. Act Razor and Pilot Wings. Yeah. Well, guess what? If Once once they come up with a hack sheet for it... You're going to hack it. Uh, I heard well, they said they're making this one harder to hack, so... Oh, yeah, which is fine. I mean, so I have... will find a way. I have very little experience with the SNES. I mean, most of it came because it was, it was out when I was in college. And we just fucking wasted time smoking weed and playing Street Fighter 2, which is not a bad thing. No. Yeah, not the worst way to blow time. If yeah, you're I can find like, like, a new hardware version that's almost like that retro, you know, the uh, AVS that I've Yeah, heard. yeah. Because the AVS can play Famicom games. Right. And actually, I've heard that the Famicom Castlevania 3 is better music and much easier. Really? Yeah, I saw a guy play both of them. And there's like one scene where you gotta go like across these pendulums. Yeah. And at one point in the old version, and the one we got, there's like bats flying constantly. You gotta stop them. On the Japanese version, no bats. Really? You can just jump across, no problem. All right. So um, we got one more to do. We're running long. We gotta go, we gotta so go we got one. one last one here, and this is the one, Mike, that I thought was inceptioned into my mind that you owned. Yep. I got the 3DO. What time will my daughter be home? The passive type probably plays Nintendo. What time will my daughter be home? Somewhere between 10 and 2. The aggressive type probably plays Sega. What time will my daughter be home? You want her back? And the other type definitely plays 3DO, the most advanced home gaming system in the universe. Yeah, uh, was, I got this for like 50 bucks, so it wasn't anything I paid more for. And the 3DO, the funny thing was, originally that, was, that had a price tag of $700. And there was that whole video, I think it was like when they were throwing like the any uh, Super NES and the Genesis into a trunk. You yeah. don't want these, you want this. And the thing with the Well, 3D- I could spend less with these two combined, can't I? And again, the 3DO was one of those things where, again, if it hadn't been so expensive, oh. uh, uh. it might have done okay. Yeah. Because here's the thing. You, it was actually, what I've heard was it was very easy to program for. Um, there was nothing, there was no regions that you had to worry about. Right. Um, and it actually came out with a few good ports. I mean, it gave us, it gave him like Gex was supposed to be like the mascot for eventually for yeah. that game, which was a fun game. Voiced by Dana Gould, by the way. I heard a very interesting thing on the Cracked podcast, no, it was uh, on Popular Opinion Podcast, about they were talking to um, the programmer mm-hmm. of Gex, and someone was complaining to him about the... Um, Someone was complaining to him about the, the pronunciation. Well, how do you know it's pronounced Gex? Isn't it Jex? No, it's Gex. I programmed the fucking thing. <laughs> but actually, there were a few decent ports of it. I remember, like, I remember when Wing came into 3. It was actually better than the PlayStation version, just the way it's set up. Yeah. But I think one of the best games that ever came out with was Star Control 2. It had yeah. a great port of it. It was a great game. had a great story. Some great voices that yeah. they made. The music was good. Um, and it was it was one of those games where you could really get into it. It was actually all like time event, so you had to make sure you do something at certain times or it wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, it, was sad, it was sad because I think it had some potential, but again, timing of it and the price killed it. Because they were going to come out with another version, but it never you know saw the light of day. Right. But there were a few fun parts to it. It just uh, no, it just it just unfortunately didn't work out. Well. It was <laughs> just a very very expensive system. Yep. Well, guys, this was a good conversation. Yeah, this went yeah, a lot longer good. than I was expecting, which is good, you know. Mike, thanks for coming back. Hey. Woo, woo, Joe, woo, thanks for helping out again. I know woo, you're more you're very excited. Catherine, thanks for participating. Woo, thanks for, thanks I feel for, bad. Yeah, thanks for staying awake. Sorry. Hey, hey, thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for transporting Joe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I knew when when you first brought it up, I'm like, I know I'm gonna have to tag him in like I did for the Mario episode because I got nothing to say. Yeah, well, you want to talk about the Harry Potter for the PlayStation? That was oh, awful. God. Oh God, it's based on a movie. Just give up. Ugh. So anyway, we we will have a topic you'll be able to talk amply about next time. Quite amply. Oh yes, because it's October, which means it's Halloween time. Halloween, the annual Halloween show. It has been. Yeah, this is our tenth Halloween. Halloween show. Yeah. Wow, this will be Good our 10th us. Halloween show. Go us. So, uh, we've been putting this off for three years. We're finally getting to it. Yay! Guys, we're going to shit all over the alien film vo- oeuvre. Oh, 
God. You mean the two good so starting ones with and the, the two really good ones? ones and then everything else. Oh, they're not. No, oh, they're the not. Other... James Cameron and one really. <laughs> weren't they going to actually try to make a movie that pretty much erased everything else and kind of do the events after the second? They were going to no, Superman. Termin- no, that's Terminator. Oh yeah. No, yeah. no but they heard they're also for aliens. Oh, yeah, they're going like, to. Like where Hicks su- is actually alive. Mike, they're going to Superman Returns. Uh, most of Alien. No, uh, no, no. Uh, that was that was um. Oh, who's the director? So, so you're not to get to shoot anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, just gonna talk to the aliens. <laughs> District Nine director. I know what you're talking. about. Oh, yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah. Blunk, he was yeah. gonna do that, and then uh, Ridley, Ridley, Ridley Scott was like, "No, I think I want to do Alien Covenant." So you're not doing that ever. God damn it! So anyway, we're gonna talk about everything from the 1979 classic all the way to this year's uh, less than classic, opposite of a classic, Alien Covenant. And everything in between. So if you want to talk video games, we can talk about some of the Alien video games. Definitely going to talk about the Alien vs. Predator shit shows. Yeah. And um, probably a whole, whole lot more. Yeah. So if you want to uh, get in on that action, please send us an email at geeksaladradio at gmail.com. Uh, post it on our Twitter page, which is at Radio. Follow us at Geek Salad Podcast on Facebook or email our respective email addresses if you know who we are. Who am I? So John again, John? <laughs> so again, Mike, Joe, thank you. Welcome back. Hey, no again. Um, and until next time, I'm Andy. I'm Mike. I'm Joe. I'm Catherine. Go forth and be nerdful. We'll talk to you later. I'm coming to get you about... Uh-huh. Oh, hey, Mario. Took down this bridge here. Also killed the princess, BT-dubs.